Paving six paving six bone. Expansionist nationalism, our penultimate um, form, brand, strand, type of nationalism. And I think for many, um, expansionist nationalism, or certainly the kind of aggressive and militaristic face of nationalism, um, is the dominant image um, the ideology seems to um, project. Which is odd, because in fact it is the, the absolute opposite um, of the principled belief in national self-determination which was at the very um, the centre of it, the initial um, nationalist movements. Um, the aggressive face of nationalism became most apparent during the late 19th century as European powers um, attempted to um, um, create um, empires that span the globe. Um, they indulged in the, the scramble for Africa, um, the name of, in the name of national glory. Um, looking for their place in the sun. And certainly, um, this, this colonialism, this imperialism, uh, was linked in with the, uh, the embodiment of, of national prestige. And each victory um, was greeted by demonstrations of, of public approval. Um, jingoism, the idea that uh, each victory um, and each new um, territory was uh, another feather in the cap um, and, sh and proving one's national greatness and, uh, um, and, and power and authority. And what distinguishes this form of nationalism to earlier liberal nationalism is, is its, its chauvinism, the idea that nations are not, in fact, equal and that they do not have the same right to self-determination, rather that some nations are believed to have characteristics and qualities that make them superior to others. Um, the European imperialism is the clearest example of this, where Europeans um, widely believe that the white peoples of Europe and America were intellectually and morally superior to the black, brown and yellow people, um, or peoples of Africa and Asia. So European imperialism was, a, was seen as a kind of a, a moral duty, where um, the colonial peoples were, were the white man's burden and imperialism was going to bring about some kind of the benefits of civilization, uh, in particular religion and Christianity, to the, uh, the less sophisticated um, peoples of the world. So it was very uh, a, a break, a break from um, liberal and even conservative nationalism. Now that it is an attempt to try and prove um, the power and the glory um, of the of the nation state. Um, this, this idea of national chauvinism breeds with a, a, an intense and even hysterical national enthusiasm. Um, the individual is, uh, is, 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 is a, as, as a separate rational being is swept away um, and becomes an irrelevance. Instead, it is the, this wave of, uh, or a tide of patriotic emotion. Um, and this was noted as, 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 as being integral nationalism, where the individuals lose their identity and become consumed within this all-powerful nation. Um, and and, and it's, no, it's no surprise that this militant nationalism is, is accompanied by militarism itself and military glory and, and conquest and territorial gain. Um, is seen as evidence of national greatness. Um, and the, the civilian population itself is in fact militarised, um, um, where you have to, uh, in effect, enter into some kind of um, marital bond with the nation, where honour and integrity, um, complete dedication and absolute loyalty become paramount. The kind of people that are attracted to this brand of nationalism. Um, it, it has a strong appeal for those who are isolated, um, those who are powerless, because nationalism offers a, a prospect of security, um, self-respect and pride. Um, you can um, give yourself over to the nation and you can um, enjoy the glories uh, of, of, of a nation as if they were your own. So it's a heightened sense of belonging, a kind of intense 
um, nationalistic feeling. Um, and, and, and what goes hand in hand with this is a negative integration because you are portraying yourself as being this great power, this glorious nation. And it's clear that from that, there is going to be um, a, a threat or an enemy. So national chauvinism and breeds this kind of clear distinction between them and us. Uh, and the world becomes divided into the in-group and the out-group. Uh, the out-group can be blamed for all, all frustrations and misfortunes and a scapegoat for um, any kind of issue with the nation. So it's, it's, it's no, no surprise that when there is this clear distinction between them and us, uh, it can be a, um, a hotbed and a breeding ground for racialist ideas. Um, and you can see that in pan-Germanism, where there's been a characterised by um, anti-Semitism. So certainly this movement, this um, colonial, imperialistic, chauvinistic nationalism is very much at odds um, with the liberal national side of things and clearly shows um, how nationalism can be used and co-opted by um, various different political traditions.